Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to another episode of Raw Politics. Today, I want us to look at the political pact between Kalonzo Msioka and the former Deputy President, the Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa. We want to see whether it is lethal enough to lead to victory come 2027. If that is some topic you are interested in, please stay tuned. And if you are watching for the first time, take a moment, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss similar videos. Before I delve into whether this political realignment is effective enough to guarantee victory, let us look at the history of Rigadi Gashagwa and Kalonzo. Have they been friends before? According to my research, I don't, uh, I didn't find something that shows that Kalonzo Musioka and Rigadi Gashagwa have been friends before at personal level or politically. However, they are very close in our days, and uh, so it is what we would call friendship of convenience, where your interests are aligned. Kalonzo Musioka wants to be president, and the only challenge he has is one William Ruto. Rigadi Gashagwa wants to punish Ruto for removing him from power. And so Kalonzo Musioka, since he can't vie, and even if he could vie, he would not win, Kalonzo Musioka is his tool to punish uh, Ruto. So their interests are aligned. How did we arrive to a situation where Kalonzo Musioka and uh, Rigadi Gashagwa are now the best of friends, politically speaking? Well, around June, President Ruto agreed to have a national dialogue with one Raila Odinga, something that the Kikuyus disapproved of. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once you bring Raila on board, you always lose Kikuyus. I said, uh, Uru tried to bring Raila on board, he lost Kikuyus. And immediately, Ruto allowed for national dialogue, he lost Kikuyus. And regarding being the opportunist he is, went to the ground and heard that Kikuyus were not happy with Ruto about this. And so what did he do? He incited them more and with the belief that they will galvanize around him now as their leader. And to some extent, he has achieved a lot. The point is, Rigadi Gashagwa realized that Kikuyus were not happy with William Ruto due to uh, the national dialogue. And so him being vocal against the national dialogue appealed to the Kikuyu base so well. But also, the campus were seeing that Kalonzo was being managed. The campus were feeling like Raila was playing them. So, uh, Kalonzo also f uh, leaned into this, that he, well, they were being played. After the dialogue, Kalonzo, Musioka, and uh, Rigadi started becoming cozy, by the way, uh, friends, etc. To the point that during the, uh, the Gen Z's um, fiasco, both Kalonzo and Rigadi were pro the Gen Z revolution for the first time. After that, they would meet in churches and they would be like, uh, now Kambas are part of Gema, or oh, now we are no longer called um, uh, uh, Lower Eastern, we are Mount Kenya South, things like that. So the friendship uh, began. The intention was, ladies and gentlemen, Kalonzo Musioka was to become the face of opposition against the Trudeau government, while Rigadi Gashagwa was supposed to antagonize Ruto from within so that by 2027 Rigadi Gashago was to walk out and say I have tried to be with Ruto I have not seen something tangible he's not delivered for Kenyans don't forget he would be the one who had sabotaged him but then he would say my people I think we need to just try Kalonzo give him a chance and that one would have left Ruto exposed so Ruto saw this coming and uh, he said Rigadi should now be uh, out of government so that he can oppose the government from without not sitting in cabinet and chairing cabinet subcommittees and then sabotaging government uh, policies at the same time so after that Rigadi so no need of hiding their relationship with Kalonzo they have been very cozy and um, you've seen even uh, the Kikuyu Council of Elders ratifying Kamba as part of Gemma, and all these things will still go on. The question we need to answer, the brief history aside, is that is the relationship between, uh, is, is a combo of Rigadi and Kalonzo Musioka powerful enough to challenge William Ruto come 2027? And the answer is no. On its own, it cannot. Because one thing that people are forgetting is that as long as Mount Kenya do not have one of their own on the ballot, their turnout is worse than that of Luanyanza. Let me explain. The counties of Kiambu, Moranga, Kirinyaga, Nyeri, Nyandarwa, and Laikipia 
have over 3.5 million votes. The counties I've mentioned have a combined total of about 3.5 million votes. Guess what they gave Ruto in 2022? 1.7 million. That, ladies and gentlemen, is less than half of the votes. So when none of their when none of their son is on the ballot, the turnout of Mount Kenya is that mediocre. If 2022 is anything to go by, Alonso will be an outsider. And so the motive, the motivation to get out and vote for Kalonzo will be the same as the motivation to get out and vote for Ruto. Why? In 2022, Kikuyus were getting out to punish Uhuru Kenyatta for bringing Raila on board. And so that motivation got us only 50%. And in 2027, Kikuyus will be getting out to punish William Ruto for removing their son from power. And that motivation, ladies and gentlemen, might not get more than 50%. So if he's working with, let's say, 2 million votes from Central, maybe he's lucky to get a few from uh, Upper Eastern or Mount Kenya East and a few from Nakuru, this guy will be playing at maybe uh, 3 million votes, the same that Ruto got in 2022. Okay? From the 10 counties. He would be he would be playing at around 3 million votes. And so if he adds with Kamba vote, um, he's at maybe 4.5 or a total of 5 million. And that 5 million, ladies and gentlemen, cannot get Kalonzo Musioka elected. That will be too little to even compete with Ruto alone without Raila Dinka. So it will not. The only time this political pact will make sense is if they can convince the Luos to back it. And I maintain that Luos are going to determine who becomes the president in 2027. Why? Because I said the three communities that decide who becomes the president are Kikuyus, Kalenjin, and Luos. Anytime the two of them come together, they produce a president. As of today, the Kalenjin are Kiku and Kikuyus are not on the same page. They have been on the same page since 2013, and they have produced president since then. But now they are not on the same page. Chances are that Luos and Kalenjins are going to be on the same page. And should that happen, ladies and gentlemen, they produce the president, meaning Ruto will be re-elected. And since in politics anything is possible, let's say this combination of Rigadi Gashago and Kalonzo convinces Luos to back it, then Kalonzo has a chance. But without that, ladies and gentlemen, Kalonzo does not have a chance to win. I repeat, Kikuyus have proven that if none of their own is on the ballot, they will not turn out as expected. An example is 2022. Of the 6 million plus votes, only 3.8 turned out, where 800,000 voted for Raila and 3 million voted for Ruto. That combined total is still lower than what they gave Uhuru Kenyatta as a single person. So you see, the turnout is going to be low. And ladies and gentlemen, lest you forget, the reason as to why Kikuyus were voting in 2022 was to punish Uhuru Kenyatta for bringing in Raila Odinga. And that got Ruto 3 million votes. So chances are that when they are turning out to punish Ruto for bringing in Raila Odinga, it might be 3 million votes from the 10 counties. If you add with the Kambas, the 1.5 million from Kambas, or let's say uh, they now, uh, we are still working with the 2022 figures. And so let's say Kambas now, if you join the Kamba diaspora, the ones in Nairobi, the ones in Coast, and you have maybe 2 million you add to the 3 million, you are at 5 million. That cannot get Kalonzo to the presidency. He cannot win with that. Unless they find a way of convincing other communities to join them. But then you will argue that, oh, you are very naive. You don't know that that combination of Kalonzo, Musioka, and uh, Rigadi has the support of Natambea, has the support of Eugene Wamalwa, 
as the support of uh, Matiangi or Kio Mutata. I don't know who. I want to tell you this with a lot of humility, that Kenya's politics works this way. You can't go into a race without a base. You can't hope for a base to come up. Okia Umtata, having been vocal on Twitter, is hoping that these Gen Zs will register as voters and somehow become his base. That is the same thing Matiangi is depending on, the Gen Zs. Eugene Wamalwa cannot have more influence than Wetangula among Bukusus. It can't happen. And Natambea, in my opinion, is doing all this drama to up his stakes so that he can be re-elected as governor.